Uh, right after you suck on these little Chinese nuts. Oh, that's mm. nasty. Oh. How'd that sound? Mm. So long, gay boys. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? So today, I'm gonna have to apologize and eat my words from the last Deluc review video because I basically implied that Venti was overrated. But after more testing and exploring his builds, I found out that he only seems alright at first in an early use until you dive deeper and look through his multipliers. So he's listed as a support, and I'm assuming most people like myself and the group of people I play with saw him as such. When you first use him, the first thing you notice is how bad his normal attack is, and it's easy to dismiss him for his damage and just use him for exploration or dealing with trash mobs since his skills don't really work too well against, say, the mages with the elemental shields or any larger enemies who can't be lifted. I mean, look at it. That's level 2 normal attack between Venti and Fish... 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 Fishy Fish? I, Fishel, descend upon this land by the call of fate and... And, uh, she also has Oz for bonus damage, so... Assuming you do have multiples of her, which... Her Oz bonus damage comes with her first constellation, and she's included in the Venti banner, so... Just assume me. But now I dug a bit deeper and compared his multipliers to other characters that also fill the support and DPS role, like Fischl... Fischl... Whatever that snake-looking character is throwing her Oz around like the Mark II. Hey boss, I have a cancer. And I think he should honestly be built as a utility DPS burst with elemental damage focus rather than energy recharge like most people to abuse his ultimate. It's easy to overlook his E ability if you built him like that since you generally just toss it into his ult and can't really see the numbers anyway. But take a closer look, and even mine at just level 5 on talents does an incredibly broken 366% press damage at a 6 second cooldown and a ridiculous 504% hold damage with a 15 second cooldown. If you haven't sold your pants yet, keep in mind that it doesn't take any elemental charge to use. For reference, Deluc has some of the highest damage in the game and his ultimate ability does 540% damage at level 5 with a 12 second cooldown. So if you just burst twice with Venti with a 6 second cooldown, that's 732% damage with no energy cost, and the percentage increases are greater than Dawn's. Like, what even is that? I mean, his kit is probably one of the most flexible in the game because it could even work with your existing setup if you have a primary DPS carry. For example, I like to throw Venti's ult and his E, run and swing in with the Luke, then hold Venti's E ability to burst and take flight and get out of there before the 8 second ult and the enemies have a chance to counter attack. Then you just continue to kite and recycle until everything dies. Or you can just be a baby and run around spamming E like a hooligan. Or even use Venti's E ability to lift in a melee DPS to juggle until the enemy dies since the enemies will fall in slow motion. Worth pooling? That should be a no-brainer. On top of burst damage though, his ultimate ability is absolutely ridiculous for Abyss and other dungeons where the enemies can be lifted. I mean, 8 seconds in a fight to stun an opponent is just stupid strong. So before we move on to his builds, I just want to mention that in the gameplay I'm actually just using the Sacrificial Bow and playing Genshin in the alley behind your apartment because I spent all my rent money on Stringless and then just got a stupid number of Widsith books to show for it. I normally would suggest Sucrose as an alternative, but after looking at the numbers... Sucrose should just be called Suckrose in comparison. I haven't been out in a while. Alright, so now onto the weapons for Venti. In first place, I would put the Stringless Bow for obvious reasons. That extra 24-48% elemental damage is just stupid on Venti. In second place, I would put the Verit... Verid... The Verid... Bow... English, mother... Do you speak it? For its suckage or vacuum power to help group enemies when your ultimate is down. Shouldn't have to explain why that's good, but it'll help you line up your enemies for your other units or just to e-burst. In third place, I would say the Sacrificial Bow, which you saw in the gameplay. Because also, for obvious reasons, it lets you spam E more with a 40-80% to 80 chance to cancel your cooldown. And now, for the artifact sets. In first place, but very close to second, I would say Noblesse Oblige. I have no idea if that's the correct pronunciation, but... For the elemental burst damage, with the set effects helping out your entire team and supplementing his abilities as a support, 
since you typically throw his ult first, then start dumping your other skills in. In second place, and for late game, I would build into Vir... Viridescent... Vinfederer, because of the four-piece effects. The reason why I didn't make this first place is just because if you throw your ult at slimes, which are everywhere in Abyss, or the elemental mages, it'll take on the element of the enemy in the ultimate. So it could be great, or completely useless, depending on your team. In third, but not far behind at all, especially for a mid-game set, I would say Gamblers. On top of the elemental damage boost, if paired with Sacrificial Bow, it could be huge for late-game dungeons and Abyss because of the variety of enemies. So in theory, you could throw three of your E abilities in a row and pretty much destroy everything every 15 seconds. Not to mention it would instant charge your ultimate right after using it to set up. This setup might actually be some of the highest burst DPS in the game at the moment, Hell, I'd challenge you to find another character with that damage potential on another single character. Now, onto the last part, where we'll just look through his skills for those who don't have Venti but are thinking about pooling for him. Alright, so for the first thing that we're going to take a look at are his talents and then we'll move on to Constellation. His first talent is his normal attack, where he can perform up to 6 consecutive shots with the bow. For his charge attack, he performs a more precise aim shot with increased damage. While aiming, favorable winds will accumulate on the arrowhead. A fully charged wind arrow will deal an animo, animo damage, uh, whatever, wind, wind style. He'll deal wind style damage, alright? For the third part, he will perform a plunging attack where he fires off a sh shower of arrows in midair before falling and striking the ground, dealing AoE damage upon impact. His second talent is Skyward Sonnet, his bread and butter. A wind upon which all hymns and songs fly, bear these... Okay, do I? Should I even read that? I probably shouldn't read that, huh? <laughs> I sound like an idiot now, god damn it. Alright, so when you press it, he summons a wind domain at the enemy's location, dealing AoE Animo damage and launching enemies into the air. We've already covered all this. When you hold it, he summons an even larger. By even larger, they mean even larger, like massive. AoE. If you've watched the gameplay, I'm assuming you have, unless you're blind, then I'm sorry. He creates a wind domain with Venti as the epicenter, dealing AoE animo damage and launching affected enemies into the air. After unleashing the hold version of this ability, Venti rides the wind into the air. This is probably most useful for exploration, to be honest. Like, there's so many situations where I didn't want to run all the way up a cliff and then jump off just to find those little blue ghost thingies, and it's just so much easier to use as he. That's probably his most useful utility, to be honest. So, enemies hit by Skyward Sonnet will fall to the ground slowly, which makes it very easy to combo into. Wind's Grand Ode is his ultimate. He fires off an arrow made of countless coalesced winds, creating a huge storm eye that sucks in objects and enemies along its path, dealing continuous animo damage. For elemental absorption, if the storm eye comes into contact with hydro, pyro, cryo, electro elements, it will deal additional elemental damage of that type. Elemental absorption may only occur once per use. So this is what I meant earlier when we were talking about artifacts and that sometimes like that artifact set could be kind of useless. Um, so yeah, when you pull in slimes and things, the entire ulti turns into that element, so slimes are obviously immune to their own element, so hit or miss. Embrace of Winds, holding Skyward Sonic creates an upcurrent that lasts for 20 seconds. That's what helps you jump with his E ability. And then Storm Eye, I just got this actually, regenerates 15 energy for Venti after the effects of Winds, Grand Ode, End. If an elemental absorption occurred, this also restores 15 energy to all characters of that corresponding element in the party. So. I guess it's kind of balanced now. If you guys haven't heard, Venti is getting a nerf where he his ultimate is going from 60 to 80 energy, which honestly isn't that bad. Because like thinking about this, I never even had this before with just basic energy recharge gear and I, I pretty much just spammed it every time it was up anyway. It was like pretty much never on actual like energy cooldown if that's a thing, if you know what I mean. Alright, and then his last talent is Wind Rider, where he decreases all stamina members gliding stamina consumption by 20%, similar to what Amber does. And then now we're gonna go take a look at his constellations. So his first constellation is Splitting Gales. He fires two additional arrows per aim shot, each dealing 33% of the original arrow's damage. 
His second constellation is Skyward Sonnet, decreases enemy anima resistance by 12% for 10 seconds. Enemies launched by Skyward Sonnet suffer an additional 12% anima resistance and physical resistance decrease while airborne. His third is Ode 2000 Winds. He increases the level of Winds Grand Ode, which is his ultimate by three. Maximum upgrade is 15, that's very strong. Hurricane of Freedom, when Venti picks up an elemental orb or particle, he receives a 25% anima damage bonus for 10 seconds. This, if you're wailing, like this will, that's gonna be something else, man. Venti's gonna be one hell of a nuker after that. His second to last is Concerto del Cello? I, I think it's Cello, right? Alright, so he increases the level of Skyward Sonnet, his E ability, by 3. Maximum upgrade level is 15. They're pretty... I mean, every character pretty much has this in this for one of their abilities, so nothing too special there. Storm Defiance is his last constellation, and you're insane if you actually get this far. Targets who take damage from Winds Grand Ode have their anima resistance decreased by 20%. If an elemental absorption occurred, then their resistance towards the corresponding element is also decreased by 20%. And my English sucks, oh my god. So, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next. I do, I only want to make reviews on characters I own for obvious reasons because I want to know how good they are in practice. So out of these, let me know which one I should start focusing on next. Currently, my highest ranked are probably just these four. And yeah, subscribe, like, I hate saying that because I sound like a tool. And you guys have a good one. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.